every young person today wants to essentially be an entrepreneur. Right. They'd love to be famous like you. Right. In a sense, you lived what so many people consider is the American dream. Have you thought about that? If you don't have peace and insight, I always say the American dream is only half of what it seems. Hi, I'm Adrian Banker. Welcome to One Nation Under God. I always love speaking to mega influencer and motivational speaker, Trent Shelton. You may have heard of him from Rehab Time. I mean, tens of millions of followers on Facebook and Instagram and online with this podcast have been watching his progression as he's influenced many over the years with his online platform and his raw and real delivery. But what you might not have known is that he is helping influence the next generation of the top athletes in the country. He himself had a stint in the NFL, but what he's trying to do is prepare these young athletes who are entering this new world where you get paid starting in high school for name, image, and likeness deals that you negotiate with brands. I mean, multimillionaires are being born in college thanks to these new deals. You've heard of Caitlin Clark. She's one. Caleb Williams, that's another, and Livy Dunn all making all of this money before they go pro. But what Trent wanted to do was prepare these athletes with his own advice, his own brand of influence, and his faith. He talks very candidly about God and his walk with Jesus, but he also has the mental health aspect to help these young men actually prepare for the pressures of fame. I was invited to speak with Trent and his family in North Texas. Even though NIL is a good thing, I feel like, for athletes, but it can be a distraction. I just know him my journey of sports, you know, those distractions really <laughs> made it a little bit tough for me. And so I'm seeing kids in the social media world that now the NIL is becoming more important than the game, than the actual main thing. I just want to help these kids, you know, get a little bit more, uh, a better foundation emotionally. So when all these things come at them, they're able to say, oh, I don't want that. I don't need that because they know themselves a little bit better. So what types of distractions are you seeing with the young men that you work with? Some are your own family. Well, social media is one. And I don't want to always sound like that because social media changed my life. Like, I love social media. I think it's a tool, but you do have the things in social media, right? You have the comparison that says, oh, this guy is getting this amount of money. This guy must be better than me. And that's not the case. You also have now the pressure of, oh, this university is better because they're offering me more money. And that's not the case. And a lot of kids are finding that out. And then you have the pressure of just, you know, um, the opinions. You know, we live in a society now where, you know, opinions are everywhere. And so this kid picks this school. It's all oh, you only did it for the money. Are you are you don't deserve to be here? And so a lot of kids are having to deal with all these external things that it's like, man, I just want to play football. But now I have to be a businessman at the age of, you know, 17, 18 years old. I have to understand taxes. I have to make a decision that literally uh, is the catalyst for my future life. And so it's a lot more pressure for them to make those right decisions. You played pro. You said you lost sight of the main thing when you were playing pro. What did that mean for you? Yeah, um, when I got to the NFL, I stopped doing, or I stopped doing as much, should I say, the thing that got me there. So the hard work, the focus. And for me, that was my goal though. I didn't have a further standard. I had a goal to make it. I didn't have a standard to say, you know what, I'm gonna be this athlete until it's time for me to retire. And so the distractions of, you know, the life, of an NFL player, the party life, um, all the things at that time, you know, you had Facebook and even MySpace at that time, all these external pressures and saying, oh, I watched this my whole entire life. This is success. Oh, I get to be around these celebrities. Oh, I get to have this type of money. So let me live this lifestyle to impress people back home so people can know that I made it. And so it was a lack of self-worth on my part when I look back. And I just wish I had that foundation of self-worth to say I'm worthy whether I have this or I have that, and I can be able to focus on my dreams and my goals. So what brought you back? I mean, your career with the NFL ended. Yeah, rock bottom brought me back. Um, and realizing that the foundation, I believe for every life is self-worth. That inner confidence to say, I deserve whatever's coming to my future. I deserve my best life. I deserve these things. And then you don't settle. Even when, you know, from a standpoint of like, as an athlete, like, if you know your self-worth, then you're not being pulled everywhere. You're not allowing this school to sway you and say, oh, you're worth this, or this ranking to say, oh, you're worth this. No, I know I'm a great athlete because of the work that I put in. So for me, having that self-confidence, that uh, self-reassurance in myself, not in a cocky way, but in a just a reassuring way, in a confident way, allowed me to make better decisions to say, I don't need this. I don't need your, I don't need to please you. I don't need to go this route 
to make you happy or anything like that. I'm going to do what I feel God has called me to do. And you say, God, a lot of our emotions, or maybe all of them, are stemmed from our belief systems. For sure. You know, what we think about ourselves and what we think about others and how they perceive us. So how much has your belief in God inspired everything from rehab time to all your books, including the latest uh, Protect Your Peace, and to how you invest in these young men? God is everything for me. You know, um, even in my career as a motivational speaker, you know, companies will tell me, hey, don't talk about God so much. And I'm just like, well, I'm not the guy for you because there's no way I can tell my story without mentioning what God has done for me. When I lost friends and I lost things, God was still there for me. So I'm telling these kids that no matter what you lose, if you don't lose your faith, God has a plan for your life. And so the plan might not be to be an NFL player. That's a great, you know, uh, focus to have. But when you know God got you, God is going to, Jeremiah 29, 11, he has a plan to get your best life for his greater purpose. And sometimes his purpose, I realize this doesn't make sense at the time. Like, why am I going through these things? But if you just trust and lean down on your own understanding, you'll realize that, you know, God really does have something better for your life. First of all, Congratulations. Thank you. You committed to a school. Yes, ma'am. Where are you going? I'm going to Arizona. This time a year ago, I had no offers, so I would definitely say it's, it's a dream. But you had multiple offers at one point this year? I did. And I got mine in January, so in the off season of football. What made you choose Arizona over the other schools? Um, I would say, I would just say positive relationships with, you know, the coaches, my, my relationship with my wide receiver coach and just knowing he played in the NFL, that's that's big for me. And um, I would just say it just felt like home. Like out of all my visits, I would say that that was just the place I knew I knew I had to go to. I would say I would say hard work, hard work and determination for sure. Do you think that enough young men in your position are prepared when they go to school or go to the pros? I would say no. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely a lot of pressure. What I know, the starting receivers in, in Power 5 football make six figures. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely big. Do you think that there's, do you think weaknesses are exposed when you get more money? Um, yes, I would say like, like mentally, like what you do with your money, how you save it, how you invest in it. So, absolutely. I would just say the people around me, like they, you know, they, they advise me to like just do great things and they also help me like when I need help. So I would say that for sure. Like my uncle. Like your uncle. Like I'm checking uncle. out your hat though. Mm -hmm. And I'm checking out your shirt. Mm -hmm. And then I see your necklace, your chain. Yes, ma'am. How much is faith and, and Jesus a part of who you are as a person? Um, I would say it's everything, you know, just, just giving my life to Christ at a young age is a big thing for me. How Absolutely. old are you? Um, like eight, I think. Eight years old? Yes, ma'am. What's your testimony? I was praying about it a lot because I seen like people younger than me getting offers and like my uncle told you in eighth grade and seventh grade and stuff like that. And like my sophomore year, I didn't have anything. So, I mean, I would just say working hard and just having faith in Christ. In terms of prepar preparation for you going into a season of life where you could see a lot of money, you could see a lot of attention. Absolutely. You can see maybe some girls try to like just go out with you because you got money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is God enough or is Jesus enough to keep you centered in the life that you want to lead? I mean, I would say absolutely, you know, just 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 giving your life to Christ. And I mean, just praying like before you go to sleep every night, that's a big thing for me. You know, just just asking him to, you know, remove people that, like you said, just want to be around for that reason. Like praying before games, like, you know, just just having just having faith in him to, you know, just deliver me and just 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 give me power. That's what I would say. And you've seen him do it. Absolutely. What's one thing that you're going to hold close that you're going to keep kind of in the forefront of your memory when those high pressure times come, when things get tough, when you're playing in college? I would just say just have fun. I mean, that's why you're there. I mean, you have fun playing the game. So just have fun. And I mean, just don't just don't let it all stress you out. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's a game and we're playing it because we have fun doing it. And I mean, calling and talking to people that, I mean, that can that, that you know that can help you with your mental, like my uncle and stuff like that. So I mean, just staying focused and just talking to the right people when you feel like something's going wrong, just picking up that phone and calling somebody that you can talk to. Okay, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. I want you to give me a Trent Shelton impersonation. Um, I want you to sound like your uncle and tell me what, <laughs> I'm, I'm you, okay? I'm you. Um, I'm you, I'm, okay. 
I'm okay. calling you on the phone and you're gonna pick okay. up the phone. Okay, I got I'd it. I'd be like, yo, Unc, what's up? What's up, baby J? How you doing? How um, you doing? You know, I'm living, I'm living, having fun. Uh-huh. What, what's the word today, Unc? Um, I mean, nothing much. Just got down with this podcast. Just got off TikTok live, you know. How you been doing? You know, it's real. You know, there, there's a couple problems I have right now, man. Like, everybody's trying to have me buy dinners when we go out. And, like, I understand, like, sometimes being generous and stuff, but uh -huh. they have me picking up the bill every time. What is your advice? I mean, you can't just pick up the bill every time. It got to be, you got to be balanced. Everybody got to pick up the bill sometimes. Well, what do I say? I mean, just, just, you just got to be blunt with them and just let them know. I mean, you're not picking up that bill every time. I'm all about God. I'm all about loving God and praying. And I've been praying, right? But I haven't been able to make it to church as much because, you know, I haven't really found the right church. And I don't know what to do. Like, I know I'm supposed to be in community, but we got all these practices. Like, what mm -hmm. do I do? What's the right thing? I mean, I would just say, you know, setting aside time where you can do that, like, after practice. Like, if I practice in the morning, then I mean, do it in the evening. Just just keep picking up that book and just keep having faith in Christ. All right. I think there's a Bible study I can go to on yeah, Wednesdays. Yeah, I would advise that, for sure. All right. Well, your advice is always good. Um, thanks so much for your time. Of course. All right. One love. All right. One love. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. That was good. <laughs> that was good, for sure. <laughs> Don't get lazy on the route. Think. Good. Do you teach your kids to pray? Do you teach them to ask God to open these doors of opportunity or to help them change their perception of themselves? Because I mean, growing up with a motivational speaker, I would think that they're always motivated, yeah. but I'm sure there's moments where you can't force your child to think a certain way or believe a certain way about themselves. Yeah, I don't want to be motivational speakers and I want to be dad. And dad's a little bit different. You know, when I'm motivational speaking, you know, I'm there to speak to an audience. You know, as a dad, I'm there to listen more than I speak. I'm there to understand and see what they're going through and be able to learn each one of my kids because, yeah, I might can talk to Tristan like this, but I can't talk to Maya or Marley like this. And so I give them a lot of range to figure things out and understand what your relationship with God looks like. You know, of course, I'm going to be your guide and your mom's going to be your guide. But at the end of the day, you have to see what it is. For me, going out in nature, I connect with God that way. That might not be for you. It might be to sit in the church and go to church. That's for me, too. But it's like, what does that relationship look like? And I think what they're seeing and figuring out that, you know, there's no perfect prayer. Let me just pray and talk to God and building that relationship, I think, is uh, the thing that is most important for me to give to them. I've been the kid that had a great foundation with my parents, but also was around other kids that became like my brothers because my parents took them in and took care of them. Even to this day, they still call me and say, man, your dad this, did this for me, paid a cell phone bill. So... I always want to duplicate that. Um, I want to make sure, you know, the foundation here is strong, but also people that come around us know that they have a place to call home or a dad or a mom or a brother or a family that they can depend on and lean on. So that's why setting the tone here matters so much for me. He's very present. That's a, that's the crazy part. Like with him, people think he travels so much, but he's actually a home 80%, 85% oh. of the time. But is there anything that being married to Trent has helped you to uncover about what your destiny oh, is? Like oh, the one thing I talk about is, yes, I'm a mother, but not all mothers are the same. And motherhood is not perfect. So my thing is I like being vulnerable. Like I don't oh. have meals every single day. You know, like sometimes we'll get Chick-fil-A. I think the main thing is um, being able to watch her be... I would say like a superhero. And I think sometimes people don't give themselves credit because they think it's normal, but for her to be able to, you know, deal with the person with a big career, because I know that's a lot. The expectations that people put on her that are unfair. Um, for her to be able to hold the fort down with the family, do so many things that she said, give me the freedom to be, I know everything's okay. A lot of people don't have that luxury, you know, that gift to, I have friends in this industry, they're still worried about what's going home. I don't have to worry about that. So uh, outside of that, her creativity also motivates me. Um, she she has a unique ability, and I've told her this plenty of times, like anything she sets her mind to, she accomplishes it. And I've seen it in her since day one. I mean, even more so than myself. So that always gives me the motivation to always go for bigger and better things because I'm like, man, Maria just, picked up a camera, now she's a master at it. She just started a podcast, she knows how to run this. And so that inspires me a lot to keep going. Maya, is mommy a superhero? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's times where I feel like 
like there's times where he feels like I've kind of like gotten comfortable. He's like, hey, come on, we got to we got to keep going. You know, just having someone that pushes you without feeling like you're being what's this what's this word I'm looking for? Forced. Forced to do something, you know. With me being in social media for for a while, I would show up all the time and create content. But the past few years, I've kind of just coasted and just kind of not took a little break, but not show up as much as I used to. But he's like, "Hey, what's next? What's yeah? What are you, what's going on?" So just having that that extra push. Maya, what would you say is your favorite thing about being in the Shelton family? Going to my brother's games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you a fan of your brother's games? Tristan, what would you say that you've learned from your mom and your dad about being the person you are? I would say just keeping my head up always, never putting it down through the highs and lows. This is where you went at. This is where you went at right here. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Good, good work. This is what separates y'all, man. I'm telling y'all, it's the mindset. And that's 100% for today. You call him dad, you call him Coach Trent. But how important has it been to have somebody in your life, and Carter, I'll start with you, who speaks to you not just about the plays you make on the field, but the kind of person you are? It means a lot. I mean, he's always positive, always talking about, like, no negative things. And I just think it's, like, it means a lot that he's in my life and talking about, like, always staying positive. He's preparing you because you want to go pro. Yes, ma'am. And you want to go pro. And now you can get paid when you're in college. Yeah. And you both know this. Yes, ma'am. You see other pro players. I mean, the media reports on it all the time. They're very talented football players, basketball players. They have millions of dollars that they're making every single year. And then they make some decisions that maybe your mom or dad wouldn't be proud of, right? I feel like they think their life's already set and they already have all the money they need. So I just think they make some decisions that aren't really good for them instead of making the decisions that are right for them. What do you think is the number one piece of advice your dad has given you that's helped you develop? I think it's like when I'm tired, that I still have a lot of energy to keep going. I just need to kick into that mode and keep being motivated to keep going. Carter, what's one piece of advice that's stuck with you that sometimes it's like, it's repeat, replay in your head that Coach Trent taught you? I would say just staying neutral, just like blocking out everything, like, when you're like hear all the other people talk about like everything just staying neutral you have all these people all around the world who watch your videos not all of them would probably ascribe to the exact same foundational faith as you for sure there's a lot of people that you reach because of your work with mental health and with getting people to love their life enough to not take it but did you find that it was hard to have conversations about god on social media at any point during this journey or did you find it was actually organic and people appreciated your authenticity. People appreciate it because, you know, I'm not necessarily telling them how they live their life because I just live by this and I don't know if everybody agrees. It's like everybody was raised differently. You know, I always think if I was raised in a certain part of the world, maybe I would believe a certain type of way. Or maybe if I went through some things in my family life, maybe I wouldn't believe. And so I always just try to be that voice for people and say, hey, this is my life. This is why I believe in this. And, you know, whether it's for you or not, you know, you can experience just how much peace and how good it's been for me. And I've noticed like there's people who don't believe in God that come to my events. And when they leave there, they're like, man, I want to know more about God. I want to go on that spiritual journey. So it looks different for all of us. And I just want to be a representation of, you know, a higher power spiritually for a person. And for me, it's Christ. And that might not be for you, but it's okay. I mean, one of the most revered names in the world and one of the most controversial or hated names in the world. When you're teaching these young men who could inevitably become millionaires before they're 22 yeah. because of these changes with NIL. What types, what types of character lessons do you actually pull from the pages of scripture or from the Bible that actually end up being universally needed and accepted for these young men to be prepared for a life like that? Yeah, I think, man, that's a great question. Um, for me in teaching them, you know, I, I'm not, sure if it's a certain passage or a certain scripture we, we dive into different things but i think universally what i'm teaching them and telling them is like your life is is greater than just yourself and when you look at you study the, the, the life of jesus right or whoever you believe but for us it's jesus his life was bigger than him he made sacrifices uh for a greater cause um he has for things that a lot of us wouldn't do so in the sports world as an athlete you have to do the same thing 
I mean, it might not be on the extreme of the whole world, but you're making sacrifices for your teammates. You're making sacrifices for yourself to be able to get something greater. And um, I'm just always pushing them to think beyond even just their current circumstances and now. Like, what is your life going to represent? What are people going to say about you? Are they just going to say you're a great athlete? I think you're selling yourself short. How about you be a great human? How about you be a great servant? How about you be a great leader? And I think if you can check off those boxes, as well as being a great athlete, um, that's great. You know, one of my biggest fears, Adrian, was like, I didn't want people just to say Trent was a great athlete. When I thought about my life, I didn't want that to be it. I wanted to say Trent was a great man, a great human, a great leader. And by the way, he was an athlete too. That's the main thing. And it sounds like to me that as you've helped all these millions of people, they're actually helping you because it's just reestablishing. You're, you're like the, the spokesperson yeah. for what a lot of them are going through and didn't even really try to be. You're not preaching at them, no. but you are empathizing yeah. with them. Absolutely. Have you found a particular challenge in this younger generation that is fresher or newer, whether it's because of social media or because of the times that we're in, that maybe you didn't have to face when you started your career? Hmm. Yeah. I think the highlight culture. And the highlight culture is everybody has highlights. You're addicted to posting your highlights. Adults, we do it too, right? We just show our best self, whatever like that. Cool. But it's becoming dangerous now because you look at professional sports. There was a kid that I just saw the other day. He was at practice and he got beat on the route. Like every great cornerback in the world has gotten beat. And this one moment now goes viral because, you know, he got beat pretty bad, but it goes viral and everybody's talking about him. Oh, you're terrible. You're sorry. Off of one highlight, one clip. And this kid is phenomenal. And so a lot of kids now are afraid to even compete. There are statistics that say that even I talked to a lot of coaches that kids are afraid to run track. You know why? Because they don't want to be the kid on the viral clip that's getting burnt. So now I don't want to compete anymore. And so this generation, it's a lot of pressure like that because now you can't even, you know, fail without quote unquote being labeled a failure when that's a part of the process. And so I'm really trying to teach these kids like your value is not in the moment. It's not in the clip. Even with Tristan, he'll post his highlights. I'm like, hey, post the bad too. Like start being neutral with everything. Don't just get addicted to the highs, right? The lows can actually teach you how to win in life too. So start getting, getting to a place of confidence in yourself and say, yeah, you know what? I dropped the ball. Look, I should have caught that. That's all right. Yeah, I got a touchdown. Cool. But I'm staying neutral in my emotions so I don't get high, too high or don't get too low. You have coached high school students. You've coached these independent leagues. They're all in preparation for our young people who want to go pro. Yeah. But you've also talked to some pro players. Yeah, for sure and college, but you've, you've talked to professional athletes. If you can teach somebody about money at 15 or 16, a lesson that maybe their big brothers are not learning, what would that be? What's the lesson here so that we don't end up on the same path as some of these pro athletes who have shown that they're not able to handle the money and the fame? Get out the business of impressing people. If you stay in that business of impressing people, you'll go bankrupt. And what you're seeing with athletes is impressing people. It's, I want to drive this to impress people. I want to have this to impress people. I want to spend $10,000 at the nightclub to impress people. So if you get out the business of impressing people and you actually get a plan to budget, say, you know what? With this type of money, I'm going to reward myself with this. But I'm going to invest the rest of my money in here so my money can make money just in case I don't want to play 10 years. You might not get cut. You might not want to play for 15 years and protect your body. So number one, Get out the business of impressing people because you're going to save a lot of money, I promise you. And number two, ask yourself, how can I make this money work for me? Because listen, I'm all about hard work, but I don't want to work harder than I have to. So I'm trying to always figure out ways to let the money I made be able to sustain something for the future. And I think even, a, it's hard for kids to grasp this, but I think even thinking generational. And so for me, I got to a point, even in my early 30s, where I like, you know what? This is for my grandkids, it's for my great grandkids that I'm not going to meet. I want to try to build financial wealth, financial health for even them, because we see it. So many people are behind because financially they didn't have it. And then so many people get ahead in life because they had the financial stability. So just start thinking bigger than you. And I think you'll make better decisions with some of the guys. We have conversation about that. But with Tristan, for sure, you know, we'll be out to eat and I'll have him look at the bill. So I want him to see like how much things cost. He's like, oh, snaps, this costs $100 to eat out. 
And so how can we save? Okay, let's buy food and let's eat the food in our house. So I'm starting to get him. And also I make him pay for stuff. I make him pay for the things that he wants and him understanding how to budget. And uh, starting that early, I think is, is very good, especially now when these kids as athletes are gonna be hit with you know, six figures, uh, you know, $10,000 taxes coming. How do you do all of those things? So starting in the house early, showing Tristan my mistakes, showing him why I will invest in land instead of going to buy a new car. This is why. And so he's getting those things to make his own decisions in life, but at least he's getting a foundation with money um, and how to use it and spend it. I'm talking on their language and just asking them certain questions like, do you really need this? Okay, I know you want to buy these shoes. I like shoes too, but how many shoes have you bought that you don't even care about no more? You know what I mean? Or why are you going to get this? Like, why do you want it? Do you really want it or do you want it to impress other people? And so starting to think about that early, I think can help them later on in life. So what's your goal with all that you're doing to sow these seeds of wisdom and character building in this generation of athletes? I want to create young legends. I want them to live legendary. And when I say live legendary, it doesn't mean that they're superstars or they're celebrities or hope they get all that. But a legend is an ordinary person that's extraordinary at something. A legend is a person that makes a difference, makes an impact that when their absence is gone, right, people feel it. So I want you to be a legend at your high school. When you leave your high school, I want that coach to miss you. Be like, man, I wish I would have had him. Or you have that conversation with that person, that friendship, man, I wish they didn't move away. And so uh, I want them to be legendary in every aspect of their life. And then tell me in terms of what's next for you, you've got the book out, Protect Your Peace. You and I were talking earlier, it's in large part due to the fact that your mom, yeah. she went to heaven. Yep. Was it 2022 or 23? 21. It was 21, mm -hmm. it was even a little bit earlier. And so you've had this journey and a lot of, I would think young, I mean, these, these young people, they, they had a big chunk of their youth changed, altered with the past few years. They maybe were going to class virtually. Maybe they weren't visiting friends as much or family or older relatives as much. So do you find that there's a small grief or a pain in a lot of these young people that they're not necessarily expressing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what you wrote about and I'm thinking about these teenagers who usually aren't exactly the most emotive. That's right. But you're getting them to open up. So maybe share a little bit about that. Yeah, um, that's a big thing for me. Um, emotional health. I want them to understand their emotions and let them know it's okay to open up because someone will even understand why they feel a certain way. I just feel tired, I just feel anxiety, I just feel like this. They don't realize the feelings are being stemmed from something. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about our lows of the day, our areas of improvement. Let's talk about our highs. Let's know that regardless of our highs and lows, guess what? It makes us a human. Every single human being is struggling. Some people just hide theirs better. And so the more you can open up, the more you can address things and have outlets, I teach them that the strongest words that you can say is, I need help. If I went outside and yelled, I need help, I asked them, what would happen? Somebody would probably come help me, I'm sure. And so it's okay to go through things, but it's not okay to stay that way. And so that's the process and that's what I want for these kids because you know, I had a best friend that committed suicide that was an athlete. Um, I see it a lot with a lot of athletes taking their own life. And that's near and dear to my heart because you know they feel like there's nothing more to their life and I wanna show these kids, nah, that's just the beginning of, that's just the end, but you have a beginning it's even more greater than any sport you ever can play. What's one thing from your book that you might be even implementing with these conversations with young people or that you would allow somebody to hear who's watching this that could help them moving forward? That's a great question because it's a lot. Um, one thing that I tell them, um, even if it's not super direct, I have a principle called uh, live in fulfillment. And I believe fulfillment is the greatest success. And I show them different people or different stories where people had everything and they weren't fulfilled. I show them stories where people had what we would consider nothing that were very fulfilled in that piece. So fulfillment, what I teach them is doing what you love and who you love. And so if you love sports, you know, go hard for it and be fulfilled in it, but also make sure that you fulfill yourself in other areas. You know, don't kill your imagination. What's one thing that you're imagining for yourself? Man, world peace. I want to help the world protect their peace. I want to bring peace to this world. I know it might seem like a crazy idea, but I live every single day hoping that we all can just respect each other. We all can honor each other. We all can understand, maybe not agree. We all can just try to understand each other. And I think that would be a, a lot better place. So that's what I'm living for.
A big thank you to the entire Shelton family. We really enjoyed the conversation. Trent's book, Protect Your Peace, is out now. Thanks for watching One Nation Under God. <laughs>